Hi, welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. And once again, we have some outstanding guests. I'd like to say, first of all, Happy New Year to everyone there. And they, these guests are going to talk to us about and show videos about driving. Most of us feel, you know, I got my license 10 years ago. I don't need no, you know, anybody give me any instruction. And then you got youngsters going out there too. And this is uh, a young man from uh, driving school there. That, what are we gonna do, Dennis Mawochi? He is the chairman of the MNA Intercorp Driving School Incorporated in Riverdale, Maryland. And he's gonna try to help us. And then he is assistant here, uh, uh, Herberto Buga. Uh, I, I know I kill that name, but anyway, uh, he is one of the Spanish instructors. And most of the time, you know, when you uh, uh, get instructions, it usually is, uh, you know, just English and everybody else has. But here on the Ed Brown Show, we're going to have it in Spanish and we're going to have it in English. Okay. Now, first, first thing we're going to do is go to these two videos. The first video is going to talk about the safety driving. And the second video is going to have a Spanish interpretation of the people out there that speak Spanish. This will help them. Okay, let's go to the video. I don't remember none of this. None of this from last year. Jasmine, would you leave JT alone, please? Can you help me out here, Stephanie? I'm a little lost. Well, I thought you knew where you were going. Do you have the directions? Get some food loops, JT. What time were we supposed to be there? We're late. JT. Do you want to stop and call someone? Keep going. Straight or right at this point. Yeah, that would probably be a good idea. If he hits something hard inside the occupant compartment, he may see more force than he does. One way we learn more about what happens in crashes is by running vehicle crash tests. Right now, we're in the final stages of getting this car ready for a test. It's going to hit a barrier at 30 miles an hour, and the impact is going to happen very quickly. Then we'll go back and look at slow motion film that lets us see exactly what happened in the crash. This car is going 30 miles an hour. And everything inside it is moving at the same speed. When the car first contacts the barrier, the occupant compartment doesn't stop immediately because the front end of the car is crushing and absorbing energy. This happens in a fraction of a second. But people can still be protected if they're restrained. If they're not, they continue moving at 30 miles an hour until they slam into something like the steering wheel, dashboard, or windshield. People get injured in crashes because they come to a stop too fast. When there's plenty of time to slow down, like during braking, they don't get injured. But when they slam into something hard, they stop very fast, and injuries can occur. Safety belts and airbags together offer the best protection in frontal crashes. They allow people to slow down with the occupant compartment. Airbags also spread the crash forces over the upper body and reduce the risk of serious head and chest injury. Safety belts protect people in non-frontal crashes, too. Plus, they prevent ejection. And if there are violent maneuvers before a crash, belts keep people in their seats where they need to be for airbag protection. To get the maximum benefits, 
you need to do more than just buckle up. It also matters how you buckle up and where you sit. First, the lap part of the belt should fit as low as possible over your hips. Don't let it ride up over your stomach. If it does ride up over your stomach, which can happen, especially with bench seats, the belt itself could injure you during a crash. The shoulder belt should fit comfortably. If it rubs against your neck, check to see if it can be adjusted. You might also try adjusting the seat for a more comfortable fit. If this doesn't work, still use your shoulder belt. Don't ever put it behind you or under your arm. And don't let anybody else, including children, do this. A driver should position the seat as far away from the steering wheel as is comfortable for driving. The more distance, the less chance that your face will hit the steering wheel in a crash. And keep in mind, this can happen in a severe crash, even if you're using a safety belt. An airbag gives additional upper body restraint and can keep your face from hitting the steering wheel. But remember that a crash is over in a fraction of a second, so the airbag has to inflate very fast. They look like soft pillows in slow motion, but when they begin inflating, there's considerable force behind them. Ideally, you want the bag to fully inflate before you contact it. This is another reason to move your seat back as far as it's comfortable, away from the path of an inflating airbag. Once it's inflated, it provides an energy-absorbing buffer as it deflates. Something else to remember is not to drive with your arm across the steering wheel. The reason is the same as why you sit back and away from an airbag. The initial inflation force can be enough to break your arm. Now, the up position. It's six centimeters. Toward the end of a serious frontal crash, people rebound backwards toward the seat, and then their head restraints can be important. The primary purpose of these is to protect the head and neck in a rear impact. But head restraints can also catch your head and prevent injury during rebound. A head restraint should be directly behind and very close to the back of your head. If your head restraint isn't fixed in place, adjust it so that it's behind and as close to the back of your head as possible. This way, it can protect you in both front and rear impacts. So far, we've been focusing on the best protection for drivers, and most of it applies to adult passengers, too. Then, there are some different steps for children. Ideally, infants and young children should always ride in the rear, where the risk of injury is lower. If there's a passenger airbag, rear-facing restraints should never be placed up front, because if the airbag inflates, it can hit the back of the restraint with enough force to seriously injure the baby. When infants graduate to child seats, they should still ride in back. Make sure the restraint is tightly secured to the vehicle with a safety belt, and the child is buckled in too. When children get too big for their child restraints, they may use booster seats to raise them up and get a better fit into an adult safety belt. Or a child may be big enough to use an adult belt without a booster. Just be sure the lap belt fits low across the hips, and the shoulder portion is comfortable. Don't ever put a shoulder belt behind a child or under the arm. Remember, the rear seat is still the safest. Only if there's no choice should a child ride up front. And if there's a passenger airbag, it's very important to remember that the force of an inflating airbag can cause injuries. So move the vehicle seat back as far as it will go to keep the child away from the airbag. And for the same reason, don't let a child sit forward on the edge of the seat like some kids want to do. And remember this especially. Never place an infant restraint up front if there's a passenger airbag. Riding unrestrained has always been the biggest hazard for both children and adults. Safety belts and airbags are saving lives and preventing serious injuries.